Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. Science Max! This episode of Science Max, experiments at large is all about light and bending light to your will. Huh? Huh? Right? Right? And challenges me to an ever more tricky game of light manipulation. Plus lasers, periscopes, and what does that have to do with light? Cut to animation! Find out on Science Max Experiments at Large. Greetings, Science Maximites. I'm Phil, and today on Science Max Experiments at Large, we're gonna be looking at light. Ah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Stay. That, that wasn't supposed to happen. I was supposed to press that button and there were supposed to be all these lasers and special effects, but it didn't. Well, today on Science Max Experiments at Large, we're not gonna be doing one experiment. We're gonna be doing a number of small experiments because we are going to do a light manipulation challenge. I'm gonna get an expert and she's going to challenge me to a game of light manipulation because I am the master of light. Oh. Well, at least the green lights are working. And, okay, okay, forget it. I'm just gonna turn, I'm just gonna turn it back to normal. Come on, turn back to, I'm gonna work on that later. I'm gonna need an expert to help me though. Um, oh, I know, Anne would be really good at this. It really does look kind of weird in here, doesn't it? Oh, uh, well. You okay? Hi. Hi, Phil. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't see what I was doing. Here's your lab coat. Oh. Thank you for coming. Great. Now you're from Let's Talk Science, right? Yes, that's right. All about science education, just like us. Now you're gonna challenge me to a light manipulation a, game? A light manipulation game. I've been working on a series of challenges since last time we talked. Each awesome. A little more difficult than the last. Well, this is gonna be great because I am the light manipulation master. Okay, well, we'll see about that. Okay. Challenge number one. Take a seat. Oh, well, that's easy enough. I have written something on the back side of this ball. Okay. And I'm gonna challenge you to read it. Okay, well, I'm ready. I might be able to read it from here. Let's All see. All right. Okay, I see something's written on it, but I can't read what it says. What if you squint? It looks like a couple lines, maybe? I can't quite tell. Any ideas how to solve this challenge, Phil? Um, and I have to be in this chair? Well, you can get out of the chair to set up your solution. Okay. When you read what I've written on the ball, you have to be sitting in the chair. Well, it's light manipulation, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, wait a minute, I've got flashlights in case the power goes out, so maybe I can use a flashlight. Aha, okay, ready? Pew! Um, huh. Doesn't seem to make it any easier to read. Yeah, I got nothing. Did you give up already? No, of course I don't give up. I told you these were gonna be challenging. This is nothing. I will figure this out. Um, I don't know yet. You're gonna have to get creative. I don't know yet, but I will think of something. Okay. Okay, I will be back. Here, hold the flashlight. Not looking, not looking. I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna wait right here. Okay. Have you ever wondered why you end up upside down when you look at yourself in a spoon? It's because of light reflection. Light is made of photons. Let's say that these tennis balls bouncing off this wall are photons of light. Now, when the, when the surface is flat, like a mirror, the photons, they bounce in and straight back out again. But when the surface is curved, the photons don't go straight out, they get reflected. So now, this photon is going over there, and if we had photons on this side, they would go... I don't even know where those ones are coming from. Then, okay, so we got, we got photons on this side that are going that way, and photons on that side that are going this way. So the top 
becomes the bottom, and the bottom becomes the top, and that's why you look upside down when you look at yourself in a spoon. Okay, cut to animation, cut to animation. A lens works by changing the direction of light too. Lenses are made out of curved pieces of glass. When the photons of light pass through the glass, the curved surface makes their paths change. What was only this big before becomes this big when you see it. Lenses are used in microscopes to see things that are really small, or in telescopes to see things that are very far away. Both times they are making something small appear large. Anne has challenged me to figure out how to see a small object far away, and using a lens is my solution. Check it out, it's a giant magnifying lens, and I'm gonna use it to magnify the ball so that I can see it. Sounds great. All right. I set the lens in front of the ball, which Anne has turned so I can't see what's on it. I add a light. And I shine it on the ball so that it's a little bit better illuminated. And then sit in the chair and ask Anne to move it so it's aligned. All right, so bring it to your left. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Keep going, right about there. Try bringing it closer to the ball. Okay, wait, that makes it, that makes it smaller. Try going, bring the lens away from the ball. Ooh, wait. Try a little bit further. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. You're ready for me to spin the ball around? Yep. Okay. It says 71. Nicely done. Easy. Solved. Wait, wait, wait. What? That was just the warm up. Oh, yeah? Yep. You ready for challenge number two? Challenge yeah. number two. I've got another ball. Okay. With something else written on it. Wait. Are you coming back? Nope. Huh, but I can't even see you from here. Like, like how am I, huh? You're gonna have to manipulate the light. I have to see around a corner? I have to see around a corner. All right, I'll think of something. So you remember the tennis balls in the wall, right? Right? Okay, so the tennis balls are photons. What light is made out of? and the wall is a mirror. Now right now, the photons are hitting the mirror and bouncing directly back. But what happens if they come in at an angle? Like this. Aha! Those photons are reflecting off the mirror and going that way, which means if I want to see what's emitting those photons, I can see it from here. The same thing happens when you look in a mirror. Oh, okay, mirror. Whoa. The mirror reflects the photons over here. I can see the tennis ball launcher in the mirror, which means if there was a barrier, whoa, between me and the tennis ball launcher, I can still use a mirror and the photons would reflect off the mirror and it comes straight to me, which is how you can use a mirror to see around a corner. In fact, periscopes work the same way. Let's make a periscope right now. See, hey, it's dark in here. Oh, right, because I'm gonna show you my laser. So the light from my laser bounces off this mirror in a straight line. Ha ha, reflection. We can use the power of reflection to make the light go where we want it to. We're gonna... We're gonna build a periscope. Submarines use periscopes because it's hard to see when you're underwater. A submarine will extend a periscope up above the water. The image up here gets transmitted down here. So someone looking through the periscope underwater can see what's going on up on the surface. And here's what you need to build it. Two cartons of milk, two small hand mirrors, scissors or a craft knife, a pencil, and science tape, which is the same as regular tape, except you use it for science. And remember, if I go too fast, you can always find these instructions on our website. Step one, cut the tops off your milk cartons. Take your mirror and trace out a rectangle as wide as the mirror, then cut it out. Put some science tape on your mirror and stick it in the carton at an angle. Then put a piece of tape on the inside, then, get the other milk carton and do the same thing. Put a mirror 
on the inside and then stack the milk cartons together. But don't stack them with the, with the holes on the same side. Make sure you stack them with the holes on opposite sides. And here is what's going on inside. You've got your two mirrors and one is angled like that and the other one is angled like this. Light from what you're looking at comes in, hits that first mirror, goes down to that second mirror and goes to your eye. You can use it to spy on people from below the table. <laughs> or from around corners. So there you go. Your very own periscope using light reflection. Did you know that your TV remote can be a flashlight? It's true. If you have the kind of TV remote with a little bulb on the end of it, then when you press the buttons, the bulb lights up. Yeah, I, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Phil, wait a minute. The bulb did not light up, and I've never seen the bulb of my TV remote light up when I press the buttons. Well, that's because your TV remote works on infrared, which is a kind of light you can't see. But you might be able to see it with a camera. If you have a digital camera or a camera on your phone, ah, now you can see, see? It lights up. And because infrared light works the same way as visible light in that it will bounce off a mirror, here's an experiment you can do at home. Bounce the light off your TV remote off a mirror and turn on and off your television. Check this out. You get a mirror, set it up just right, and then aim the remote at the mirror and it turns off the television. Pretty cool, right? But now, let's max it out. I've got a complex series of mirrors set up here, and I'm gonna bounce the light from the remote all over the room. And here's what that pattern looks like. The light from the remote hits this mirror, which reflects to this mirror, which reflects to this mirror, and then this mirror, and then this mirror, and then finally to the television. Isn't that cool? There you go. Maxed out remote light bouncing infrared flashlight. I gotta come up with a better name, but still, it's pretty cool. All oh, right, turn off the television and leave the room. I solved Anne's first light challenge, seeing something far away with a lens. It says 71! But now she's moved the ball around a corner, and now I have the solution. Mirror! A mirror will let me see around the corner, Clever. right? Okay, so all I gotta do is put the mirror in a position sort of like that, I guess, and then I'm gonna sit in the chair. If you could help me adjust that mirror. Um, uh, keep going that way. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, stop. Nice, okay, go ahead and flip the ball around and I will read the message. It is too small. I can't, okay, I've solved this problem though. Okay, flip it around. The lens, I need the lens. So we'll use a mirror and the lens to, good, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm gonna sit in the chair, here in the chair. It is backwards. Oh yeah, a mirror inverts the image, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That's okay, that's okay, I can solve this. All I need, whoa! Other mirror is all I need to solve this problem. So if I take this mirror and I put it here, let's see, um, there it is. It says 42. Nicely done. <laughs> Nicely I am done. ready for anything. What do you got planned for the hardest challenge? Are you sure you're ready for this? Totally. I Challenge number three. Challenge number three starts now. What? Wait, 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 wait. No, no. This is a light challenge. How am I supposed to do a light challenge if it's dark? Mm, you have to get creative. But it's dark. Wait, okay, no problem. I will think of something. I will be back. Okay. Okay, careful. Whoa. I'll be Whoa. waiting. <laughs> So you already know about reflection, right? That's when the beam of light, say from my laser, 
reflects off this mirror and bounces in a straight line. But check this out. If I don't use the mirror and I shine the laser against the underside of the water, it also reflects just like a mirror. This is called internal reflection. If I uh, have a stream of water and I put my laser beam into the stream, you can see that the laser bounces around inside the stream of water. It's being internally reflected, and the laser isn't going straight anymore. It's following the stream of water down where the water goes. Internal reflection. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Phil, how does this affect me in my everyday life? Internal reflection. Who cares? Well, I can tell you why you should care in two words. Fiber optic. Wires, three words, fiber optic wires. You see, fiber optics carry information all over the planet. The internet, maybe even your television, travels through fiber optic wires. The good thing is, because of internal reflection, you can bend fiber optic wires any which way or around corners, and the beams of light continue to go straight down inside the wires and get out the other end, making it go where you want it to go. Internal reflection, science. Back to our light challenge. I've seen something small from far away, seen around corners, but now Anne has turned off the lights. But I have a solution. Oh, Anne, oh, Anne, careful. Okay, okay. okay. Sorry, I forgot how dark it was in here. Okay, I figured it out. Okay. Ah, I have a flashlight. No, nope. so all I need no, to no, do no. Is hold on, mirror. hold on, hold on. What? There's one more rule I didn't tell you. What's the rule? You can't use visible light. How in the world am I gonna do this if I can't use visible light? It's a challenge. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, here, hold my flashlight for a second. Ugh. I'm gonna make a phone call. Okay. I think I know what to do. I'll be back. Okay. I'll be back. Oh, careful! Ah! Oh! Oh, hey, good to see you. Speaking of seeing things, let's talk about the rainbow. All the colors of the spectrum organized in a beautiful pattern. But what are the different colors? I mean, what makes them different? Well, it all has to do with the electromagnetic spectrum. This is visible light. All the colors of the rainbow. And take a look at that little black line that goes up and down there. That's the frequency of the light. Light is a wave. You see the wavelength is a little wider out here on the red side, and it's a little closer together here on the violet side? That's because every color of light has a different length of wave or wavelength. And that is what makes them different when we look at them. But if you think that's all there is to the electromagnetic spectrum, then you're mistaken. So what happens over here on the red side? Does it keep going? Yeah, it does. What? Look, we got infrared here, and then we got microwaves. These are the same kind of waves you use in your oven. And then we got radio waves, which are the same kind of waves you use in your radio. They're all part of the same thing as visible light. Huh? Let's take a look at the other end. Remember these short wavelengths over here beside violet? Well, does that keep going? Yeah, if they keep getting shorter, you get ultraviolet and then x-rays and then gamma rays, huh? Pretty amazing. And look, it's all connected. From radio waves to gamma rays to visible light in between, it's all frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. <laughs> How is this staying up? So everything outside of the visible spectrum is invisible, right? Wrong! Ha-ha! <laughs> Bam! Huh? That is an X-ray, a picture we can take using this part of the spectrum. We can use special cameras to see outside of the visible spectrum. Huh? Huh? Right? <laughs> yeah! You get... You, okay, you got it. Huh? And look at these. These are night vision goggles. They help you see in the dark. They use part of the spectrum called infrared. For those of you keeping score, that's this part of the spectrum right here. Pretty neat, right? I would sell you these, but they're already spoken for. 
Oh, and here he comes now. Hey, Sal. Hey, how you doing? You got those goggles I ordered? Yeah, go ahead, help yourself. Thanks for putting them aside. Can I put them on my tab? Yeah, no problem. All right, thanks, Sal. Okay, see you later. Nice kid. He's always in a rush, though. Phil, is that you? Yeah. Do you need the flashlight? I don't, turn, turn it off. I can totally make my way over to you. Oh. I can hear you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. Oh, right here. Hi. Because I have night vision goggles. Ooh, ch check it out. Oh, cool. Pretty cool, right? That's awesome. So here's the spectrum again, and here's visible light. My night vision goggles use infrared, this part of the spectrum here with wavelengths just a little bit longer than the red we can see outside of the visible light spectrum. All right, I would say that's allowed. No visible light, and I will see the next ball. Have you got it set up? Uh, I set it up while you were out. Okay, good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit in the chair and, and, and see if I can see it. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, I can totally see everything. Can you tell me what the ball says? It says, it says you win. Nicely <laughs> done. So let's recap. This challenge is the same as the last challenge. The light from the ball was magnified by the lens, sent around a corner by reflecting it off a mirror, and flipped back around by using another mirror. But this time, it's dark. So, using infrared light, thanks to my night vision goggles, I was able to see the ball and win the game. The light manipulation challenge is done. Science Max experiments at large. Time to turn the lights back on. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Huh. What did you do back there? Um, I, I guess we blew a fuse or something. Uh-oh. These are night vision goggles. They use some of the, 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 they use some things that I cannot pronounce. Have this container of water. Whoa. And I make it stream. <clears throat> but instead of going straight back, they're going 